Yeah. So it was something about authentication that you said uh, that she I had a question about, but uh, she wasn't really specific. So I don't know. Uh, could you just kind of uh, summarize authentication? Right sure. There? Be glad to. Authentication at the federal level. I start at the federal level. Authentication at the federal level is a document that's being legalized by the U.S. Department of State that's going to a non-hate country. So at the federal level, it's, it's very easily understood. At the state level, it becomes a little bit more complex depending on the state. For example, California only issues an apostille. They don't care whether it's a Hague or non-Hague. It doesn't matter to them. They're, only, they're one of the few states that do that. Most states issue an apostille or they issue a certification slash authentication. And, and their definition is their apostille will only be for Hague countries and their authentication slash certification if the document is going to a non-hate country. Now, you don't have to be too concerned with that when you're sending, yeah, yes, you do. I just thought about that. I, I, <laughs> I had a case where there was a Virginia document that was sent to me to process. And so it had to be first authenticated, of, uh, of course, by the state. I sent it to Virginia, and believe it or not, the clerk there attached the wrong legalization. It should have been an authentication and they attached an apostille. Okay, I didn't catch it because I'm assuming the clerk knows what they were doing. And so when the document went to be um, authenticated at the next level, it was rejected because the clerk had attached the wrong uh, type of authentication to it. But hopefully that answers the difference between the two. Okay, uh, thank you. We have uh, the next question is from Tiffany. She uh, wants to know what type of commercial industries can we market to? Okay, I would say this, any, any business that has international trade, you can, you can deal with. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, I focused on medical device um, companies because there's quite a few of them here and they do business abroad. Um, if you have a contact at your um, chamber of commerce or business, business bureau, you may be able to get some leads there for companies that do businesses abroad. But any company that has uh, distributors or even satellite uh, companies from the main company abroad, they have legalization papers that need to be processed. And uh, it'll take a little bit of research, but I'll tell you, if you, you basically just need one or two good commercial accounts and you have a steady inflow of legalizations and a steady inflow of, of, of funding. Uh, I want to give you an example of, of what this means. I want you to really get, get hungry for this because it's, if, if, I want you to taste it enough to where it gets hungry. Uh, before we go to the next question, um, Michelle, go to the page on my website that you had up before, the, uh, the services and fees. I want to show them something so they can try to understand what takes place here. Okay, now uh, look, let's look at this where it says Orange County Pickup and Delivery. Now, this is a simple document, but I want you to look at how many ways it can be packaged and how many different fees are attached to that one type of thing. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Let's look at the very top. At the very top, let me move this out of the way. What does it tell us? It says, okay, the first document, if, if I'm going to process it, it's going to cost $229. Now, do you know what the state charges to have that document done? Does anyone have an idea? Don't fall off your seats, but the state charges uh, $20. 
If that doesn't get your attention, you need to hang up right now. <laughs> because, because you will never get this. If, 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 but, but, but see what happens there. Now, because I've calculated in my costs and my profit margins, that's where I want to be. Don't be one of these people when you, because some people have done that. Well, the state only charges $20. So you know what? I'm, I'm going to charge 50. Not a good idea. You're going to have to sell a lot more than me to make half of what I make. And my fee is in the ballpark. And if you look at most of the Appleseal agencies, you'll see this type of markup that's there. So I just want to show you that so you can see the type of potential. I have quantity discounts. If they're giving me two documents, then the first one is 229, the second one is 100, the third and each additional is 85. I am close enough to my secretary of state that I can offer emergency services, but you pay for that. I don't just give you emergency services. For the first document, I charge $290. Now my costs have not gone up. The only thing that goes up is when I get an emergency, I drop everything and I take care of it because financially it's worth it. Uh, are we together? I wanna make, make sure that you see that. 290 for the first, 150 for the second, 100 for the third. Now, when you get to the bottom of documents that require the California state as no, go, go back up a little bit, just, just right there, mm -hmm. where it says CA slash US Department of State. That is a document that requires both the state authentication and the, and the US Department of State. Now, to show you the potential there, that document is what? $330. My cost at the state level, just for the paper now, just to get it legalized, the state charges me $20. To get it apostille at the federal level, the US Department of State charges me $8. Now, I have courier fees that are in there and everything else, but I want you to see the profit, profit margin that's there. And if you look at companies, you'll see this whole type of thing uh, that, that's listed there. And as it goes on down for expedited uh, Department of State, and, and they have to pay for that because when I get it to them, it's like uh, first delivery next day. And we all know in FedEx how expensive that is. So the price has to go in. Now, further down, documents mailed to us. I drop my prices quite a much there. Why? Because if you're going to send me a document, it needs to be notarized. So I'm not providing that service for you. Uh, you. You're going to provide the postage and you're going to drop it in the mail to me. So I can afford to drop my, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, my fees there. Let's scroll to the bottom where it says additional services. Now, additional services is that if your document requires an embassy or counselor authentication, I charge for that. If it's something that I can do here in LA, I charge $60 for the first document and 20 for each additional. If it's one that I have to go through an embassy like in a Washington embassy or a Houston embassy, I charge uh, $75 for the first and 55 for each additional. So that, I just want you to see this to give an idea of what you can do and how you can take this and tailor it for your particular uh, situation in the state that you're in. And, the, and I want you to see the potential. This should make you hungry. It really, I'm hoping that it does. It should make you hungry because this is business that you're turning away. This is like uh, living next to a stream of 30 pound salmon and starving to death. <laughs> when all you had to do is go to the stream <laughs> and catch one or two and have it to eat. The same thing goes to the Apple still or the legalization business. I just want you, that's why I want you to look at the website uh, to, be, to be able to see that. You now, to go back to where I was before I took this uh, uh, detour. John, 
Yes. Before we leave this, Phyllis, are there any other questions? Oh, the questions, yes. Yes, it's a lot of questions. Okay, oh, let's go to the questions. Let's Thank start you. and go to questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, Takesha wants to know, uh, hey, Takesha, what are more examples of federal documents? Certainly. Uh, the one that, that Phyllis mentioned is a, a FBI background report. And depending upon where you are, you, you can get quite a, a few of these. The unique thing about that particular report is that uh, they do it two ways. You get the hard copy and you also get the PDF, which either one uh, can, can, can be processed. That's a, a, another one. If you're dealing with what I have to deal with, a patent, certified patent agreements, uh, that's a, a federal document. Um, in that mix would be federal court documents. We're not going to go into that. That, that, that has a few more uh, uh, twists to it, but that's a federal document. Remember, you will always know a federal document because it will state a government agency by there. It will have that title of that individual, and it will have the seal of that federal branch of the government. So anything that, that has those uh, items listed there, you would know. Basically mine are just, most of mine are CFGs, is what we call them, Certificate to Foreign Governments. Uh, and we do, um, we do court documents, federal court documents, uh, and also uh, patent certification agreements, but anything issued by a federal office is, is a federal document. You will, get, you will get most of those if you are doing commercial. Not too much otherwise, except for FBI. Okay. okay, good to go. And also you see a lot of FBI uh, requests too for people that want to uh, live abroad. I see a, a lot of those for that because they have to, uh, if they want to get citizenship in another country, they have to have that uh, FBI uh, background check. Uh, next question, is there a list of Hague and non-Hague countries? Glad that you asked that. Yes, there is. Uh, there is a, a link that in the training we have that is a particular link you can go to where all of, they don't list the non-hate countries, but they list all of the hate countries. Uh, part, of, uh, part of the package in our training has that link. It's, it's an easy link that you can connect to and has a listing there of all the hate countries. What you have to be careful with, um, there are, some countries that are not Hague, but they're what are called contracting members. In other words, they don't belong to that convention, but they have said, you know, we like this legalization process. So we want to participate in, in, in it. So you treat those countries just like you would treat a regular Hague country. But yes, there's a site that has all of them linked. I keep that in my phone uh, just in case I need for a quick reference. Good to go. Next question is, could you, from Cynthia Allen, could you repeat what type of attachment is needed for the non-Hague country and Hague country? Okay, it's going to depend again on the type of document. Remember that if, if the document is going to a non-Hague country, it's going to end up with an authentication by the U.S. Department of State. That, that's one thing to keep in mind, if, if it's for a non-Hague country. Why? Because your non-Hague countries do have on file the Secretary of State, uh, Secretary of the United States, uh, not the Secretary of State, what is this called? Um, U.S. Department of State? Yeah, Department of State signatures. So they would be able to, to verify that. I mean, they asked it again, Phyllis. I want to make sure that I answer specifically what they're asking. Okay. It's, the question was, could you repeat what type of attachment is needed for the non-Hague country and Hague country? Okay. For Hague country, once you get your, if it's not a federal document, for Hague country, you get your apostille at the state level and it's done. That's the easy way. If it's going for a Hague country, you... You, it, it's done. 
If it's a federal document, it goes to the U.S. Department of State and you get your apostille and it's done. Now, we didn't go into it, the, the train, but for non-hate countries, it's a little different. Non-hate countries, when you go to the state level, you're going to get usually what is considered an authentication. That authentication is going to have to be uh, authenticated again uh, by the U.S. Department of State. And you know what, John, what this brings home to me is this is why the training is so important because yes. it is not black and white. There are um, ifs and ands and buts involved. And yes. you go into greater detail in the actual training. Yes. Phyllis, did you have another question? Yeah, there's several more questions. I, I, uh, I do want to make sure that we leave enough time for him to go over his training because the training is so important. His training is so in-depth. I mean, it just covers everything that you need to know to get up and running to actually add this service to your, uh, to the, um, to your business. And I just want to make sure we leave enough time for that. So I'm at, I think I'm going to do about two more questions and then let's do the training. And if we have enough, enough time, we'll go back to questions. How about that? Okay. Okay. I, I can't, um, I'm just trying to see, Phil, as if we run them through the process, that's going to take a lot of time. The process of your... Uh, I can uh, give them, we can highlight parts of the training. And uh, that would be and that would be good. I think most of the people are just, yeah, concerned about the, the cost and, and the process. You know, how is it okay. set up and how much is it going to cost them? Okay. You know, yeah. the, the value of it is, is, I think you pretty much proved that it's valuable. All right. So Phyllis, to clarify. You didn't want training. You wanted to know, how do I sign up? What's it going to cost? All of those. So that's what we're looking at next, John, after we handle these questions. Yeah. Okay. Let's handle the questions, and we'll go back to the school site, and I can explain everything there. OK. Right. OK, then, let's see. Does whoever, OK, this is from Christina, one of my patrons. Does whoever is translating the docs for an apostle, so she's asking about the translator, need to be a certified translator and provide some kind of stamp on docs they translate. Here's all that's really required uh, because the, the, the proof of the translation rests on the translator. If you have a translator who is translating a document, then attached to that document. In California, we call it an affiant statement, where this translator is stating that the attached document is an accurate rendition of the original, and they usually put the name of the document, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, as translated by me. And that's a notarized statement. Usually I have it done in a juric fashion instead of acknowledged. So the, the proof of the translation works on the certifier. When the translator attaches that document, that is, in fact, the translator is saying, I'm certifying that this document is correct. And that's basically all that's required because the proof of the translation is not on you, it's on the translator. The translator is the one who's liable there, not yourself. Okay, good to go. Um, one more question and then we'll look at the training. Uh, this one is from Felicia Daniel. She says, for the background check, does the customer already have that on hand when they reach out to us? Yes. 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 We are not channelers. Uh, uh, channelers are the ones that they usually util utilize in getting that. Some people may, may participate in that process, but I prefer not to. I need for them to have that document and bring it to me. Uh, uh, and then I can go from there. That's, that's the best way to do it. Now, let me point out something that's different. It's, I'm glad that this came up, Phyllis. Your police background check, 
for your attorney general background check is completely different than the FBI background check. Mm -hmm. Your um, police background check, and you're going to get some of those from time to time. Here, here's the problem you run into. The police department does not like to give any names on paper of their police staff. Uh, and there, there are reasons for that. They, they, they prefer not to do that. So when one of the administrators from the police uh, department gives you a person said, this is from the police department saying that I don't have any records and things like that. We usually treat that as a, a document custodian. And as notary, you should be familiar with that. Where in the document custodian, you are saying to the person uh, uh, with a document attached, similar to what you do with the translation, this document is a photocopy of the original which I have in my possession. And that person signs that, and then you can treat it that way. If it's a, a state background check, uh, you don't have a problem because it's going to be assigned by the Attorney General. And you can take that directly to your know, Secretary of State. It's not a problem. But the, the police department is different. I just wanted to make sure you, you understood the three different ways that you would have to deal with it there. Thanks, fellas, for that. Yeah. All right. Is that, okay. are we going to take a. No, how many more questions do you have? Yeah, let's just do this. Uh, let's see. I think that was have you ever, somebody wants to know uh, how much is your training, which we're getting ready to go over. Mm -hmm. And one more question Have you ever lost a document during transit? And how do we prevent this? Okay. In my 10 years, I have never lost a document. But the Saudi Arabia embassy did. <laughs> okay. And uh, there was one document, and they just, I, they don't know what happened to it. I, I didn't lose it. They had the receipt that they did receive it. But after that, it just vanished into thin air. Let me point something out to you as a notary. Part of the package that we send, uh, to our students is a sample sheet to use when you're getting business. The bottom of that sheet has a disclaimer where you explain to your clients that you are not responsible for anything that gets lost in transit. And any type of damage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to you would be a maximum of $100. Now you can change that like, like you so desire. But you need to spell that out front because you have no control over FedEx. You have no control over the mail. You have no control over the consulates or the embassies. So it is possible, it's highly unusual, but it is possible to lose something. Uh, so you uh, put that disclaimer there and usually when it's signed, and it's a signed document, by the way, when my everyone that I get signs that document so that they understand, you know, stuff happens beyond my control. Sorry to say that, but I can't control everything. And when that does happen, okay, here we've already determined uh, uh, up front what my liability is. Okay, good to go. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, training now. And I just want to say again that um, this is the course that I took to uh, learn how to do process apostles. And I tell you what, there is plenty of business out there for everybody and you should take it seriously. It's worth the investment. Uh, John has put together one of the most comprehensive courses I've ever seen. And uh, people have asked me, you know, Phyllis, how come you don't teach apostles? It's like, why would you mess with something that's already there? You know, I mean, this course is excellent. I mean, it taught me everything I needed to know in order to get up and running to process apostles. So I highly, highly recommend it. Let me chime in, Phyllis. I don't know if you recall, it was because of this website that you and I met years ago. Um, Phyllis and I spoke, I reached out to her. I was interested in learning about apostilles. 
Um, I came across John's website, but never heard about him. And I'm the type of person before I spend any money, I've got to check, check them out. And I saw that Phyllis was listed and John, I hope before we wrap up, one of the pages we'll cover is your graduate page. I saw yeah. Phyllis's name on that page as having completed the training. And so I reached out to her and after speaking with her, I felt better spending my hard earned dollars on his training. All right, John, it, am I in the right place? We're talking, we yes. now wanna let our um, members know what they should do if they want to move forward and purchase your training. Certainly. Uh, like uh, I'm, the comments that are coming up, thank you very much. <laughs> Some very good comments. I, I really appreciate that. My thing is this, if you're gonna buy something, it has to have value and it has to be what you need. Like, like you say, you, 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 you don't wanna throw money away. So we, we tried to make sure that this program had everything that a notary would need to, to be good and functional in it. Let's just scroll down on this page uh, that we're on. Right here, let's stop here. This is an important thing that we offer right there where it says six months of free mentoring. Because you graduate the course doesn't mean that you can go running. You're gonna have questions sometimes. We don't set you up to fail. We, that's why we offer six months of free mentoring. That means if you run into a situation, you can send us a text, you can send an uh, email, you can call, but I can't always pick up the, uh, I can't always pick up the, the, the phone, uh, but I will get back to you as soon as I can. And that's very important for our graduates. They know that, you know, I've passed the course now, does John drop me like a hot potato? Potato? No, he does not. He keeps you for that six months to try to make sure that you uh, know what you're doing and you feel uh, pretty confident about it. Now, if you go to, um, let's see, uh, go to the next page, um, Michelle. Yeah, go to the menu. Mm -hmm. And that's about us in the course info as well, so that everyone can see here. Everything is done electronically. Uh, we used to, back, back when Phyllis, I think, and maybe Michelle, we had a forum because I really wanted notaries to be able to talk to each other. But uh, we dropped that because the overhead to keep it going and the response was very low. <laughs> so that was one thing we, we, we had to remove from there. But I want to point out that all of the training is online. Uh, you never have to worry about anything. We have done certain things in there to help you retain easier. We have audio files, WAV files, and they are positioned through the training. So it's a, like a brief summary of what you just went over. Uh, all right, someone just popped up a question. Uh, I'm gonna stop for a second. Does the mentoring start after course completion? It does, but if you have questions during training that you don't understand, you simply drop us an email or drop us a text and we will get back to you uh, at, at any time. The mentoring is to keep you running and don't let you get hung up on something. Uh, but we respond to you also doing, uh, uh, doing your training. Um, one thing here, I was gonna to try to have that for you, but I, but I don't have it. Where it says a link, uh, PDF, you see where it says supplemental items? There's a link PDF US Secretary of State database. The good thing about that sheet, and that's an attachment when you get into the course, that's just something we threw in there. There are buttons for um, every state. Let's just say if you got something for um, California, and you say, well, what do I do with this? What, what do they require? You go to that attached sheet and you click the, the button and it takes you right to the Apple Steel page for California. 
so that you have all the information there at your fingertips. And, and we have that for um, uh, each, uh, each state that there is. Someone has asked a question that they see type of reinstatement and what does that mean? Okay, what does that mean? Some people, I'm quite sure it doesn't apply to anyone in this group, but some people are lazy, okay? They pay for something and then they don't do anything with it, which, which doesn't make sense. What we, and we tell everyone this right up front, when you purchase our course, you are expected to take test A within 90 days. That's a requirement. We don't want you to go to sleep on this because the knowledge is building and you have to have that consistency. So test A has to be taken within 90 days. Test B, we give you up to nine months. So you have time to do that. Now, if you pass the deadline, it's gonna cost you because you're gonna have to be reinstated in the system. The, the computer is gonna cut you off uh, as far as test A, you still have app, you have access to the manual now. We don't we don't cut you off from that, but your certification now comes to a standstill because you have passed the deadline for the first test, and we think that that's very very fair for people who miss test B. We've never had to do that. There's a fee for that in the reinstatement too. Back on the right side, yeah. But one thing that we've offered for graduates and more and more graduates have taken advantage of that, where you see unlimited manual access for $125. Here's what that is for our graduates and only for graduates. We are continually updating our information. Some of the graduates, graduates have said, you know, I would like to have access to that information. So we said, okay, you pay a one-time fee. And as long as we are in business and as long as they're manual online, you can click in at any time to refresh where you are, to find out where you are. And a lot of them have really appreciated that. That came because of requests. Now to go back over to the left side where it says audible for, for, audible for one or two st students. We gave a quantity discount because sometimes uh, notaries have another person that they work with or they want to share this with. Well, it's a little cheaper if they go uh, uh, with, with both of them then going one and then going with the other. Now, I also, I wanna point out this one thing that we've run into right above where it says, um, scroll up just a little, Michelle, a um, little more, a little more. Okay, right there, notice for placing your order. Please note the second paragraphs we have had to, Get on some people about this. Please note that the certifications are earned and awarded on a per, per person basis, not a group basis. We had some notaries that took the course and got certified. Then they wanted to put their whole office as certified. <laughs> you know, your whole office is not certified. We don't know who these other people are. They haven't taken our test. They haven't done anything at all. So the certification is done on a few, uh, only individual basis. Someone is asking, um, it was a good questionnaire. I, I should have answered it right then. And oh, how long does it take? That depends on you. We have people that finish everything in as little as uh, three or four weeks. Uh, I, that's very exceptional because there's a lot of information in there and it's, it's very compact. And then we have some people, it takes the full nine months. You know? So it, it depends upon you. Now, let me tell you one good thing that, that, that helped. If you don't pass the test on the first try, okay. what happens after that? We, Go we don't throw you away. You have three attempts. There are three different versions of test A. If you flunk version one, there's verse two, version two. If you flunk version two, then version three. Now, we've never had anyone to flunk all three. If you do, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> all right. That's, John, John, I yes. want to interject for a moment. I also see in that second paragraph, please call for special pricing ordering when ordering four or more training packages. And so I think we saw there may have been about 11 Alabama folks here on the call today. 
Does that mean if we get together and place an order for 11 people, then I should reach out to you to find out what that special pricing would be or my yes yes don't okay. don't let them put the pricing in until you talk with me what i will have to what i usually do in cases like that i'll show you where we have the uh the order order below for one or two students i will put another drop down with that particular i have to add it to it i have to add that particular drop down so that when they when they purchase um it, it will be, I have to do it in a that's hidden screen. That's because fine. If I don't, everybody will jump on that price. That's, that's but, fine. But yeah, if you get that, let me know, and then we'll work through the particulars for all right. so that everyone gets And so, in a, all right, and take a pause, John, answering questions for chat for a moment. And I brought this up, those of you who are here today, some of you have already let me know you are going to order. You may want to pause a second, speak with Phyllis or I to see if you want to do your order on your own. If you do, go right ahead. But if you want to take advantage of a potential discount, um, hold off no more than hopefully 24 hours, and we should have that information for you. John, is there anything else on the website you'd like to show the students before I leave uh, the site. Yeah, let me make a, a notation so they understand. When you place your order, you get a bounce back from PayPal that said, give us five hours. Don't panic. A lot of people click and say, I didn't get it right away. Did they take my money and disappear? No, you have to be set up on our testing server, which is different. You have to be set up on the website. There's a lot of things that have to take place. And um, so it, it, takes, it takes time to do that. So we tell all of our uh, purchasers, give us five hours, please, because we have to put you in the system. Then we have to test the system to make sure uh, that you have the access you need. You have to access to test A. We have to test all the quizzes to make sure you have access to the quizzes that you can get to the training manual and you know, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen. So give us five hours for that. Uh, we ask, uh, and it take because it takes that time to get everyone uh, set up like they should be. John, can okay. you talk about okay. the certification process? Let me just ask, ask a question right quick. Uh, the um, the Texas notaries are kind of blowing me up about this. So I just want to make sure that. Um, I, all I have to do is I'll, I'll kind of round up, round up the Texas notaries together because we have quite a few of them. And so uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, John, if you could just let me know exactly what you need for us to do that package so mm -hmm. everybody can hear the, the same yeah. thing. Yeah, what, what we need is this. And uh, we, we added something to the website and a lot of people don't take advantage of it and it, it makes things complex. All we need to know basically is your name, your um, email and phone number. Phone number is important. <laughs> <laughs> we have people who say, I've got this problem. And so that goes on days because why? The, con the, the, the communication is by email. So it goes over a period of days when if we had your phone number, usually what we'll do is send out, depending on what time zone you're in, saying, are you available during this particular time? If not, tell us when you are. And then we will call you and work through any type of technical issues that, that you may have, okay? Okay, now, thank you. The, the, um, we have not really scrutinized the graduate list like we have. Everybody's not there. Basically, here's what we do. And some of you have been up there from day one, <laughs> and we're not going to take you down. We're going to let you stay. Phyllis is up there, <laughs> Michelle. Uh, we promise all of our graduates that they will be posted up here for a minimum of one year uh, because our site does show up when people are searching for uh, Apostille agents. 
And so this is free. The, the first year we, we planned to charge after the first year, we just haven't gotten around to do that. And so some of the names have dropped off, the, the system automatically pulls them out, but a lot of the original ones are still there because we, we didn't have that feature to pull them there. And this is contact information for uh, uh, anyone who's looking for a notary in your particular town. If they pull up to our site, they can see where to find you and uh, how, to get in, how to get in contact with you. You should get some business from that. Uh, that's our reason for doing that. All right, I am looking at, I'm sorry, did I cut you off, Phyllis? Oh, uh-uh, no, I just, uh, can you show Texas? I think- I don't uh, hear you, Phyllis. Are you mute? Phyllis is muted. I'm muted? Y'all can't hear me? I can hear I can hear you, Ms. Phyllis. Oh, okay. Uh, I asked her to show text. Okay, there, are, there are a few other Phyllis trailers in this group. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, Texas, uh, so this is how much I believe in John's training. Anybody that ever asked me about his training, I have recommended them. So everybody listed under Texas, with the exception of the very first person that's listed, everybody else is people that I, I recommended that, uh, that they take John's training. So, I mean, like I said, nobody has anything out there like he does. I just All wanted right. to show that. All right, John, should I come off the website? I'm looking at our time. We are closing up on two hours. So um, anything else on the website you'd like for me to show? Uh, no, I would say for those who have not been to the website, take your time with it. There's a funnel of information is there. We tried to put everything there that you would possibly need to know uh, before uh, jumping into this. I just hope you got the idea from this that it's a huge potential and you can be as successful as you want to be in that. Uh, if you don't have this on your website, if you're not using this in your uh, uh, search ads, you're really missing a lot of revenue that, that could be yours. Uh, so it depends upon uh, how you want to do this and the product to, to move on. But this will give you what you need. You don't have to worry about going to learn other things. Uh, it's all there. We tried to make it as turnkey as we possibly could. All right. Um, Phyllis, if you can type my contact information in chat again, too. And I'm speaking not only to Alabama, members, those of you who are from other states, and you would like to, um, John, let me ask you this, does that group order, can it also pertain to those that are on the call today, and might be from Maryland, New York, as long as it is placed as a group, is, will they benefit from the discount, or do we need to treat them differently? No, if you get anyone in your group, uh, Phyllis and, and uh, Michelle, anyone okay. in your group, if you if we submit uh, the group, okay, well, I don't care where they're from. All right, uh, so because there's a benefit of them attending your seminar at this particular juncture. All right, yes, thank you, John. And so, to those of you who are by yourself representing your group, if um, your state, if you want to participate. You can email me, send me your information so that um, you can benefit as well. Or you can or you can email me. It could be either me or Michelle. All right. Before we go, Phyllis, based on the questions you saw in chat, were there any that you feel we need to ask John to answer before we wrap? Uh, no. Uh, like I said, this is uh the opportunity is there take advantage of it um you're not going to get a better uh instruction on processing apostles and uh also the fact that john offers the certification 
And I mean, he just, like he said, it's turnkey. When you finish that training, you're just ready to, to get started. If whoever you need to help walk you through, walk your uh, documents through at the Department of State, he, also, he already has people that he recommends that you use. And you wanna use somebody that's dependable because this is, you know, this is really some serious, serious work, you know, and your reputation is on the line when those documents leave your hand and go to, to the next level. So, I mean, it's just, it's, to me, it's a no brainer, you know, take advantage of it. I can't say that enough. What I would Thank like- Thank you, John. You're welcome. What I would like to add is like anything that is excellent, there will be copycats out there. Um, this is the original Apostille Agent Training Company. John Nelson is the founder and the owner. And um, as Phyllis stated, now you didn't see me on the graduate list. I, I got what I needed and I started working and I didn't do the certification. But Alabama, I'd like to see some of our names on his website. So again, let go with this. I feel anything else out there um, will not be to the same standard. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yes, John or Phyllis, any last words? Well, the last word I'd have is I, I just hope notaries work hard for their money. They do. They were, and I know that because <laughs> it was written by a notary for notaries. And I hope that you see the possibilities there and that you take advantage of, don't, don't miss that income stream. It's gonna take a little work on your part, you know, it, it, everything does, it's not automatic, but I hope that you see the potential there and this makes your stepping into it, hopefully a lot easier. All right, thank you everyone for spending your Saturday morning and early afternoon with us. Thank you, John, for sharing this with us. This is our second Notary Gal presentation. Phyllis and I have teamed up to bring this type of information to those of you in Texas and in Alabama. Next week, it is next week, right, Phyllis? Yes, next week. What are we doing next week? Next week, we are going to have um, Richard Law from uh, the field inspections. So he's going to tell us all about his, uh, I think his SoFi Society yes. and share the opportunity to also grow your business as a field inspector. And he is the owner and creator of the SoFi Society. So we're really excited about that. So again, this is just another avenue for you to add additional uh, services to your already existing business, or even if you're thinking about starting your notary business. I mean, this is just another avenue to add another stream of income. So please, same time next Saturday, and I will send out um, the uh, registration information probably by, uh, by Thursday. But if you are one of my patrons, you're gonna get the information. It's already, it's gonna be in the patron community. Um, the question was asked about Facebook groups. Yes, for um, my Facebook group is unfortunately just for Alabama residents. It's Notaries for Alabama Hangout. Phyllis, what are, what's your Facebook group in your patron community, please? Okay, uh, Notaries for Alabama Hangout. I'm just writing your Facebook group right, right quick. Uh, my Facebook groups, uh, I'm going to put Facebook group, are um, Texas Notary Training Academy. And um, let's see, plus we have a Texas online notary group in Facebook. And then we have our Texas Notary Patron Learning Community. And then we also have our, our clubhouse, Michelle. What's the name of our clubhouse group? Notary Lounge. You're, you're, you're muted, Michelle. Texas Notary Training. On Clubhouse, we host the Notary Lounge every Sunday at 3 p.m. 
we were just awarded our own clubhouse. The clubhouse, the club name is Notary Round Table. So you can find us either under Notary Round Table, and then we're also, you can search and find us under the Notary Lounge. Either way, we'll be there tomorrow at 3 p.m. So different ways to join us. All right, this is really good. Again, those of you who are serious about taking this training, get your emails to us today. We will respond with the fee. And um, I'm looking to place orders for my group um, as early as Monday. If you need more time, let me know. But this is something we want to move forward with. Same with yeah, same with um, same with Texas and anybody else that wants to be part of the Texas group. I'm going to try to get those orders in, in as soon as possible. So uh, go ahead and email me. I put my email in the chat and Michelle's email is in the chat. Very excited about this, John. You did a great yes, job. Yes, you did. Thank you. You know, definitely. Thank you. There's one thing I forgot to mention, and I, I think the, the potential students need to know that if you, we have, have you seen a uh, a certified Apostle Asian seal? We are very proud of that seal, and you can use that seal on your website if you are a graduate. It took us two years to convince the state of California. They did not want, <laughs> they did not want to do that. I had to write letters, explain what we did, show them the marketing to it. And they said, oh, well, we're going to give it a try. And, and see, they thought it would be misunderstood. But I said, no, uh, if everyone looks at the website, it's very clear that this is not a government thing. This is a private entity. And so, that seal is important. I, I want to tell you that when people click on your website and for Apostille and they see that you're a certified agent, it should make a difference. You know, when you see a plumber that's a certified, you feel better than Jack who lives down the street. You know what I'm saying? This guy is going to do it correctly. So I want to point out, I overlooked that, but that's very important. That took hard work to get. And you can use that on your stationery. You can use it on your website. You, graduates can use it anyway within certain conditions. There are limitations that we have on it, but it's there. And I want to make sure that the potential students were aware of that. All right. And I want to echo that. You know, I do have the certification. I am a proud certified apostle agent. So I, you know, it just it just validates, you know what you have done. And if you go through John's training and you take those uh, certification tests, by the time you finish all of that, you do want a certification. So, you know, take advantage of it. It is definitely well worth it and you will have learned a lot. All right, this concludes another Notary Gals webinar series. We're going to sign off now. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye, Christine. Bye. Bye, Romy. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye, John. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, John. And my joy. Thank you. Great.